Hello and welcome to another pony video. As we work, I thought I would tell you the next installment to my horse history series, bringing you the tale of the most famous war horse in history. As you can hear, we definitely Today, we trotted and cantered up and down these little hills. That's good for their, their muscles and their hind quarters, their stifles. And then I trotted her over these little uh, logs. We did some trots. And of course, I didn't film it. Still having fun. But we're going to get some next time. And it's a quiet day today. She's been exercised. Miles has been exercised. The pony's been exercised. And then we will give some hay and some grain and do a grooming. We're going to do some hoof conditioner today. And then I'm going to put Rambo and Ranger out here to run and play. So that'll be fun. Okay. Here we go. A boy named Alexander was born to Philip II of Macadamia and his favorite wife, Olympus. His legend grew that he was fathered by Zeus, his mother having a dream that her womb was struck by a thunderbolt that caused a flame to spread far and wide before dying away. Other such legends had emerged while Alexander was king, quite possibly at his instigation, to show he was superhuman and destined for greatness from conception. A horse dealer offered a dark stallion to King Philip for 13 gallons, about $18,000 in today's money. The horse seemed to be unmanageable, vicious, and unable to be ridden. Alexander, only a boy at the time, took the challenge to tame the horse. The elders watching Alexander scoffed at the idea of him taming the wild horse. But they began to take notice as Alexander took heed that the horse was not used to certain situations like seeing his own shadow. And so would turn his head towards the sun and continue to train. The 
The stallion was a big, beautiful black horse with a large star on his forehead. Alexander named him Bucephalus, his name meaning ox head for the brand on his haunch. King Philip took notice of Alexander's great knowledge in training this horse and how he began taking part in leading men through challenges. He vowed to give Alexander a bigger kingdom than Macedonia. He knew his son would go on to greater lands. The duo began riding onto many battles together and the horse would only accept Alexander as his rider. As Bucephalus began to age, Alexander would rest him from major battles. But in the battle for his conquest of Asia Minor, overthrowing the Achaemenid Empire, vowing to reach the ends of the world and the great outer sea, where the barbarians met up with Alexander and took the horse and others hostage. Alexander was so vexed, he sent a herald to convey to them if they didn't return the horse and hostages, he would give them all onto the sword, men, women, and children, without mercy. And when they did so, and also returned his cities onto him, he treated them kindly instead and paid a ransom for his horse. In 326 BC of July, in modern day Pakistan, the Battle of Hydaspes, Alexander is fighting Porus, the India king. They are being charged by 200 war elephants, destroying the Macedonian infantry. Despite the heavy losses, Alexander managed to overtake the opposing force. But his beloved Bucephalus had been gravely wounded. Stories also were written that the horse healed of his wounds and died of old age at 30 years old. Alexander defeated King Porus in the battle to promptly found a city to be named after his beloved horse, Bucephala of now Pakistan on the river Hydespes, to be forever in legend and all through the land, statues to be erected in their honor. In June of 323 BC, Alexander passed a foul play at 32 years old in Babylon, possibly drinking poisoned wine, to be said to be taken ill by fever till he couldn't speak and weakened by pain, taking him two weeks to succumb to his assassins, or alas, a more plausible reason behind his untimely death was he was ill with malaria or typhoid fever. The reports reached Greece and were immediately believed, having won every battle, creating one of the largest empires in history, from Greece to India, to be considered one of the history's greatest and most successful military commanders. The early war horses were derived from the Thessalian horse, from where Bucephalus derived from Thessaly, Greece, of light riding and draft breed, originally from the Turkmenian breed, thought to be extinct, yet still surviving in rare small herds. Horses were first to be domesticated as a food source, then for transport faster than cattle. A true wild horse of Mongolia, the Przewalski's horse and the now tarpon brought back from extinction from the Ukraine to Russia. The first signs of a domesticated horse with bit wear uncovered from the Neolithic period of 3500 to 3000 era along with two dogs. The first war horse to be discovered in the Near East, possibly in 2500 to 2000 near Assyria, of writings from the reign of Mersili II. The Chariot. Two man version, then a three man in 1274 for speed and maneuverability. Used for shock tactics 
attacking from the center or at the wings, but not meant for long distance travel or rough terrain, carried to battle in wagons driven by oxen. Used through the Bronze Age to the geometric period, becoming very expensive and only to be used as a status symbol, finally used only in mythical or competitive context. Proven far easier to ride a horse. Earliest where two riders rode together as one holds both reins and the other shoots the bow. The first cavalry to be developed in Assyria by the mid 9th century, importing their stock up to 3,000 mounds a month, sent to the royal stables. In Greece, an infantry force arose out of the Dark Age, the horse to become a luxury item, a symbol of wealth and status using the horses as transportation on the battlefield, only to bring in cavalry during Philip II's reign and on to Alexander the Great and his beloved warhorse, Bucephalus. Warhorse, in memory of the three million horses killed in war, taken from cloven fields where skylark and grouse linger into the bowels of a troop ship no scent of morning dew, no bird song, only sweat and urine. And the distant sounds of war, no light, no grass of home, only the whip, for he is bound for Flanders Field. His rider glorious in his regalia, sword in hand. He was his master now in the horse's salvation. Kindness, a kind word, an apple, their bond complete. His last feed bathed in the red sun, which hovered above the morning mist, hiding yesterday's sin, for this is a place where death is king and reason is lost. This day, where man throws sacrifice to the gods, like so much sour grain crushed and discarded, to blow away into the winds of time, recorded by nations into the ledgers of loss, for now it is time. The lions gather then, the slow trot, their proud heads restrained, their mouths foaming on the bit, these beasts of burden knowing no fear, a sight worthy of Valhalla, their trust in man galloping where heroes dared not go, onward, onward they gallop, row on row into the fog, no grass here, only mud and wire, waiting for the day's call. This place, man's ultimate betrayal, onward, onward, nostrils flared, eyes wide, steam rising from his flanks, every muscle straining for the next stride, then the stumble, a moment's recovery, blood pours from his proud neck, then the ground. His head rose, a hand strokes his brow, the last kindness, a wavered shot ushers his life away, like so many before. No one will weep for you, my warhorse. No letter home. There'll be no mention in dispatches, no memorial for you are just an animal. Sacrifice on the altar of man left to rot in Flanders Field. But for those precious minutes, he was more than man. This day of all days, he kept his bond, did not flinch, though death was all around. Galloped blindly through the death rattle of the guns face on. No retreat, onward, onward. The magnificence of the horse, no equal, never forget. For it is a shame of a nation, a sin of mankind, to undo the hand of God. No glory here, only an empty cup left on the altar of insanity taken from cloven fields with skylark and grouse linger for I will weep for you my noble friend the war horse you magnificent beast by Stephen Cook
Van is looking good today. They put a new horse. See that little horse over there? They put that horse next to Panda. So she kicked the fence and threw her back out again. So last week we had a friend do chiropractic on her. And then start over. We did walks for a while and then we did trots. Now she's looking better. I mean, she still looks a little bit, a little bit sore, but much better than she was. Trot. 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 So we want to get her on a good trot. Use those legs, go up and down the hills. And I know these hills are working because when I first started working her up and down hills, she would trip up and down them. And now I notice that she's stronger going up and down. The hills are good for their stifles and joints and all their things on their legs. Up and down hills is always good. Just like us, you know. Exercise and stuff. Trot, trot, trot. We want her to get those front and in hind legs to hit into each other's footprint. And extending the leg movement. So you don't want to have them, you can do this kind of trot to, to warm up a little bit and stuff. But when you get them going, you want to get them going with their head down Come on, and move them up a little bit. So they extend the leg movement. Canter, canter. Good girl. It's looking pretty good on the canter. into a rhythm. Hop, hop. Pick up her feet more. And it's spring. Hopefully she stays sound. Hopefully I say stay sound. Canter. One more time. Canter. My legs and feet are feeling much better. sick for a while, didn't feel good, I was upset, I was not having a fun winter. Canter, one more time, canter. Yep, hop, yep. Let's go. Good girl. She's looking good. So then they can ride. So uh, I'm gonna work her on some Equifit. Oh, yeah. It's all right, you're all right. You're okay. I'm gonna work her on the Equifit a few times. And then maybe we can start riding. We'll see how that goes. Otherwise, the first couple of rides are always just hacks anyway. We'll just mostly walk, a little bit of trot. I always kind of just see how it goes. She loves riding in here. The round pin is too small to ride in with her. I can ride a little bit, but it's not fun. And the rodeo arena, she does okay, but she, she doesn't like the rodeo arena either. She's just, she just likes her big 
big open spaces. And so do I. I love riding the range. I want my own range. I'm manifesting my own range. All right. We're gonna walk it out. And then we're gonna go groom. We have a little storm that might be brewing. We don't know. So it's fine for now. We'll groom, give hay and grain. And fix the tacker in a little bit. And then we'll be good for the day. And then we'll be back. Okay, let's go. Thank you for watching, my rock star friends. Oh, to be brave, courageous, and strong as the war horse. And this is why I live for this journey. Let us travel onward, as always. The story continues. <laughs>